good day it's a sunny day and i believe it's a very good day for us here in this part of the world it's also the time for us to reflect on certain things in our lives family is very important god created a family in a family we have people of different characters some are even thieves others are gossipers backbiters and what have you all of them we have noble people in the family too we have self-centered people egoistic people we have the ones that can look out for others but in the heat of all these things you have the parents the father and the mother the father god made him to be a, the head that's a leader to lead the wife and the children the mother is like a hen to nurture everybody but there's one thing i want us to understand which is deep rooted in the way we were born children are always aggravated to their mothers why because the mother they carry them for nine months they share a lot of things together food and every other thing you see with fathers all what they do was to provide the semen that created the, the child the less the rest was left for the woman for god and the woman the result is beautiful and handsome creatures that is the result now when they are out they always come empty our children don't know anything they don't every single thing that they know or they will learn is from us and our environment our environment it teaches us the things that we want in life so the first place that we start to learn is the family god made it so is the family that is why in the family we have people so many very uh, different characters and they have different character trends that's why god made it so but the reason for him to do this is for us to learn so that when we learn we can easily live with our brothers and sisters who are not from the same womb but nowadays because we are not from the same womb we're not brought up the same we have different characters and that affects us affects when we get married affects our relationship affects the way we see life and the way we intend to to work on with life it affects us it changes everything but there's a key to that that comes from the education that you were given when you were born when you were raised you see the bible tells us that god god that created us doesn't believe in sentiments when he does his things he doesn't go with emotions he keeps emotions totally out of it that is the one part that who failed because the way that we lead our children about 80 percent if not more is based on emotions because we are emotionally involved with the child a woman naturally is emotional that's her nature and she will transcend that nature to the children be it a boy or a girl because she will react emotionally in most of the things that they say on how she intends to raise up the children men are not emotionally driven as such the way they react to their child in various circumstances is not emotionally driven they go direct to it and hit the nail direct to the point 
Now, this brings two different distinct ways of bringing up a child. The mother has emotions attached to it and the father goes direct. Now, children, on the other hand, they are manipulators. They know their parents. They read them. They are good psychologists, whether we like it or not. They read their parents. They know when to demand something from the mother and when to demand something from the father. They know. They understand it. That is what we don't know. I will always say these are children. These are children. They are not, per se, children in that, in that sense of the word. Because they know and they can manipulate you. Now, this one has brought me to something which I want us to speak just a few minutes. You see, our goes to, it goes to mothers. Because you are emotionally driven, a child might manipulate you in a way that in ways that you will never understand. And because you are emotionally driven, it tends to make you take certain decisions which are not right, but you feel they are right. You feel you are doing it for the interest of a child. But the child knows you. When I'm talking to the child here, I'm talking to even grown-ups. Your mother remains your mother. Your father remains your father. And how a child will react to the senior brother or the senior sister also depends on the way the mother reacts to the, 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 the siblings, the senior siblings. I want mothers to pay great attention to this. Especially in homes which are broken or the father is no more. Children will often take advantage of our mothers, especially when our father is not. We often take advantage of the emotional part of our mother. So, we come to them emotionally and rob them. Because we know they are emotionally involved. We know they are sympathetic to our cause. So we have a way to talk to them, especially when the father is not. This one goes specifically to mothers who are widows. Be careful with the way you deal with your children. Please, you have to act. You, there should be another part of you that you will learn from your husband. And say, no, if my husband was in this position, what would he have done? It might be difficult, but I want you to look at it that direct, in that direction. Because there is a balance that is needed. The man is not. Olori Timmy said, when the head of a household dies, the house becomes an empty shell. It is not empty until you make it empty. You, the woman, you have to fill in. You are a widow, you have to fill in that gap. I'm speaking to you today. Fill in that gap and take, take tough decisions. Decisions that you will take, your children will hate you for taking those decisions. But they are those are decisions that you need to take. And you need to understand that you are a mother. No matter the situation, the neck cannot be above the head. It doesn't matter who your children have become. You still have control over them. And when you say something and you stand with it, they will know that, hey, mama mean business today. They will calm down. No matter how hard they are. If they know that you are uncomfortable in a particular decision and they know they cannot bend you, they will change. They will blackmail you emotionally. But let me tell you something. Stand your ground. Please. Most of our children now are going wayward. The family is becoming disarray. Siblings don't respect each other because they can go to the mother and they know a way to get the mother's attention. And the mother will be sympathetic to their cause to the detriment of the other siblings as such it becomes difficult for the mother to put the siblings together because the mother's voice is no longer there that mother's voice needs to come please i'm talking this because i've had series of issues on my desk that i'm handling and I discovered that the children react the way they do because they understand their parents, they, especially their mother. They understand and they can use the mother to do things that they want, to do their bidding, to the detriment of their brothers or their sisters. 
I want widows, please, our mothers. You people should take this, take, take note. We are all children, it doesn't matter your age. You can be 60, but if the mother is still alive, that mother is still your mother. That mother can talk. Your other junior brother or junior sister or senior brother or senior sister can manipulate the mother to a cause that you yourself know is wrong, but they can be manipulated. You see, we are smart. And most often we are egoistic. Each and every one of us, we have that iota of egoistic, egocentrism in our, in, in, in our system. Sometimes we want things for ourselves, we want it the way we want. But we forget to understand who the mother is or who our brothers and sisters are. Please. Together you build and divided you fall. Families have fallen because they are divided. They are divided because there's no strong, there's no center anymore. There's no taproot anymore because maybe the father is not. Nobody wants to listen to any other person. But that mother should be now the father and the mother. Please, mothers, take note. I've been talking to families. Families have gone disarray because they do not have a taproot anymore. Because the father is not there. And because, because the father is not there, the others don't want to listen to their brother or to their sister because there's no balance. There comes a time when a mother will say, no, this is your senior sister. This is your senior brother. You will listen. That decision is final. There comes a time when the mother will say, no, if you don't want to sit with your brothers and sisters, then don't come to my house. If you don't want to do that, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear anything from you. Your grandchildren, I don't want them. Stay. If you cannot be together, there comes a time when you take those decisions. They might be harsh, but those decisions are there to strengthen your family. Mothers, please take note. Take note. Take note. Your nature has made you to accept certain things. We children, we know and we understand that. We use it to manipulate you. But be careful. That manipulation might, might tend to be to make them undermine their other brothers and their other sisters. Take note. All the fingers are not the same. Some in the family might be well to do. Be careful the way you see things. And also remember this. When God gave you those children, it is your responsibility. It's not the responsibility of your children to take care of their, their brothers and sisters. No, it's not their responsibility. It's your responsibility as a parent. You have a due responsibility to take care of your, your siblings. So if your other sister or, or your child wants to take care of the sister or the brother, he or she is helping you. Take it as a helping hand. Don't take it as a privilege or they must do it. No, it is not their responsibility. But as a child, you always want your mother to be fine. You always want your parents to be fine. So it is your duty, as the Bible said, honor your father and your mother to honor them. But remember, you don't order them to the detriment of your own family because you also are raising a family that looks up to you. If in as much as a mother raised you and your, your mother is looking up to you, you also have children that are looking up to you. There should be a balance. And that is where the problem lies. Today is just a short word for mothers to understand. For us also, parents, to understand how these things work. Thank you all for being loyal to the case consulting and training platform. We'll always be there with you at any point in time. Don't forget, it is our platform, not my platform. To God be the glory. Have a blessed day.